Okay, this isn't just about deep sleep, but something more. When talking about hibernation, most of us might relate it to deep sleep. But that's not just it. And when looking into hibernation in human beings, the subject becomes quite complicated. As we said in the beginning, this is just the tip of a massive iceberg, and there is a ton of possibilities for it to happen rather than sleeping just in science fiction movies. So, what exactly are the chances of human hibernation becoming a reality? Let's see in today's episode. Hey folks, welcome back, and you're watching Future Tech Eden. What are you guys waiting for? Like, share, and subscribe! Consider the following scenario. A bear is curled up in a large, fluffy ball, motionless and silent. It's breathing really slowly and occasionally lets out a pretty loud snore. Yeah, it appears to be taking a well-deserved nap. Well, it's actually doing something else. It's not precisely sleeping, but it's also not fully awake. This is what hibernation is. You may be thinking, isn't hibernation just an extremely lengthy sleep? No, not exactly. In reality, many animals come up from hibernation on a regular basis, and one of the reasons may be to catch up on a slow wave sleep. So, if hibernation isn't sleeping, then what exactly is it? Despite popular belief, hibernating creatures do not sleep throughout the winter. Hibernation is a prolonged variant of deep slumber, a state in which metabolism is reduced to less than 5% of normal. Most physiological activities are severely delayed or altogether stopped. When dwarf lemurs hibernate, their pulse rates drop from nearly 300 beats per minute to less than 6, according to Blanco. They can also go up to 10 minutes without taking a breath, instead of around every second. Their cerebral activity is no longer observable. This is not the same as sleep, which is a tranquil resting state in which unconscious tasks continue to be performed. In reality, hibernators may suffer frequent arousals in order to sleep. That's what hibernation is. What does it mean among humans? That refers to how we could apply it to our technology. That would be a better way to pass a long stretch of time by entering a deep sleep to shut down some of bodily functions and conserve energy by doing so. If bears and many other smaller mammals, including squirrels and hedgehogs, can do it, why can't humans? That poses a huge set of complications, making hibernation an unnecessary and an impossible goal. But that's for now, not for tomorrow. From this point of humans, this could be a great deal in extensive space journeys. Yes, scientists are adapting lessons from animal hibernation techniques for medicinal cures and may someday use them for space travel. Some doctors are using therapeutic hyperthermia, which involves decreasing the body temperature by a few degrees for several days at a time to treat patients with severe brain injuries or disorders like epilepsy. And experiments are underway to determine if it is possible to decrease the people's body temperatures, put them in a sleep-like condition for days or weeks, and then awaken them with no negative consequences as astronauts may need to do so for journey into far space. Of course, this could also mean that technology has evolved sufficiently to make certain science fiction movies into a reality. But wait for a second, it doesn't mean that we'll have hibernating astronauts anytime soon. But we're learning from nature how to understand some of the things that happen to animals during hibernation, such as avoiding bone loss or muscle loss. This will be something that would be quite useful for long distance space travel. Soon, a group of European biomedical experts, biologists, and neuroscientists will provide suggestions for future lines of human hibernation study and financing. One Italian scientist says he will launch an experiment this month to decrease the body thermostat of a test animal for six hours as a prelude of human trials. NASA financed a preliminary investigation into the possibility of placing astronauts in torpor, or hibernation, for weeks at a time. Last year, the anticipated benefits including a reduction in the amount of food and water required aboard their spaceship, a reduction in waste products, smaller living quarters, and less space necessary for supplies, exercise, and entertainment. Of course, when looking at the other side of the coin, putting the crew to sleep may reduce their psychological difficulties. The concept, however, did not go to the second round of funding. NASA says it will use U.S. astronaut Scott Kelly's year-long stay at the International Space Station, as well as medical monitoring of his Earth-bound twin brother, former astronaut Mark Kelly, to learn more about safeguarding humans who leave Earth's orbit for months or years at a time. 
Biologists, on the other hand, aren't waiting for results from space. They're studying the neurological and biochemical pathways of hibernating animals like the Arctic ground squirrel, which keeps its internal body temperature at 0 degrees Celsius, which is basically the freezing point during the winter, and several types of bears that sleep for six months at a time before waking up as frail weaklings. We can reproduce it in people if we understand how they do it. That is the fundamental tenet of the entire project. Kelly and her colleagues at the University of Alaska's Institute of Arctic Biology are investigating how the Arctic ground squirrel can survive in such frigid temperatures. They believe they've discovered the correct molecule, the A1 adenosine receptor. While they have discovered that activating this receptor causes the animal to get chilly, they have not discovered what causes it. They explain that they don't know what the natural signal for torpor is, or where it happens in the brain, which might be in the brainstem or the hypothalamus. The next step is to understand how to employ medications that activate the A1 adenosine receptor safely in order to cause animals that do not ordinarily hibernate to enter and remain in a state of torpor for two to three weeks at a time. Cooling the body induces a shorter time of deep human sleep, which is already utilized to heal brain damage patients at Johns Hopkins University and many other institutions. That means we have a present technology that can be put to use directly. A Hopkins professor of neurology and anesthesiology has employed therapeutic hypothermia to aid patients suffering from severe epilepsy or brain injuries. He claims that they don't know why it works, but they do know that it lowers metabolism and inflammation in the brain, both of which are associated with epilepsy. You can simply say that cooling the body allows the brain to restore itself. You really reduce the requirement for energy throughout the body so that it has time to catch up. While chilling the body may be able to produce deep sleep in humans, a months long space voyage under such conditions is unlikely to be beneficial. Many researchers believe it is unlikely to be possible. The hibernator which an animal can now perform excellently has developed such that all enzymes and biochemical systems are suited to run at low temperatures. That is not true for creatures that have never experienced it. We can reduce our body temperature and survive for a short time, but it's improbable that we can allow all of our systems to drop to significantly lower temperatures and still operate. But you don't have to feel bad about this. Maybe some other way shall pop up and scientists are on the right track to find it. Currently, space missions can only go so far because spacecraft and crew are not equipped. Extreme changes in the way spacecrafts are manufactured and humans function in space are required for future deep exploration missions to be successful. And it may be guaranteed when looking at current advances such as SpaceX's Starship project. These would be massive transports capable of traveling long distances, particularly to Mars. Researchers are currently investigating how hibernation would affect the entire design and journey of a crewed trip to Mars. It's easy to see why building a smaller spaceship would be advantageous. While the crew's living quarters are eliminated along with fewer supplies, the spacecraft's mass is reduced by one-thirds. And that's all still beneficial. See, as we told in the beginning, we have only scratched the tip of the iceberg and there's more coming on the way. So make sure that you stay connected with us. So coming to the end of the video, what are your ideas about hibernation? Moreover, what do you think of today's episode? Anyways, drop in your views about today's video in the comment section below. That's about it for today. Make sure to subscribe to our channel for more content just like this one. And while you're at it, turn on the post notifications so that you never miss out on any of our future uploads. Drop a like for the video if you loved today's video. Hope you enjoyed the video. We'll meet again in the next one.